Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Katie, and today we are going to be doing my July reading wrap-up. So I technically finished two books in August, but it was, I finished the one this morning on the second and one yesterday on the first, but I kind of wanted to include them in the July wrap-up, so there's that. <laughs> okay. So I have my list of books. I have some physical books with me. Hopefully I have all the ones that I think I own. I think we're good. Okay. Okay. So I finished another nine books, I think. Yeah. Nine books in the second half of the month. If you missed my first reading wrap up, cause I do mid month wrap ups now since I read so much, I will link it down below in the description box for you all. If you want to check out some other books that I've been reading this month. So this past reading month has been one of the best this year. This, these books that I'm going to talk about, I don't have anything under four stars. They're all between four and five stars. There's a couple four and a halfs. It was just a really great reading month, or I just wasn't thinking straight, but I really enjoyed all of these books. So I have most of them, I'd say half, I have half the books physically, and the rest I'll just put on the screen. So I have four middle grades to talk about, and one's kind of middle grade slash YA, and then the rest will be adult fiction. So I'm, I was going to do my star rating, but I guess it doesn't matter because they're all pretty close. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. So this one was The Eye of the Storm by James R. Hughes, and the author kindly sent me a copy to read and review, and I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. It was very entertaining. Um, it is reminiscent of like Chronicles of Narnia. This is all about dinosaurs. Our main characters are dinosaurs and I just love that because I love dinosaurs. I think they're so cool. So I thought this would be a really fun one to read and I was right. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Author, he got a lot of inspiration from the spiritual gifts in the Bible. So this is Christian fiction. This is YA, listed as YA, but I'm feel like upper middle middle grade will also enjoy this as well. So this is all about a long crest. I believe long crests are dinosaur on the cover. So the dinosaur group is called Stargazers and every year they have a ceremony. I believe it's once a year, but uh, the uh, younglings in the group uh, go forward and the leader of the group hears from, I know I'm going to pronounce this name wrong, <laughs> Aeneas. I always pronounce it wrong, but it's but it's like Chronicles of Narnia Aslan, so it's a representation of the Lord. And the leader of the Stargazers hears from him and he and you get to find out like what gift you have. If you're if you're gifted in in healing, if you're gifted in um in just being a servant, if you're gifted in being a leader. So each one finds out what their talent is. And then they go and train for that. But our main character, Longcrest, he goes up and the leader of the Stargazers hears nothing from Aeneas. And so basically they label him as a no gift. He doesn't have a gift. He apparently doesn't have one. And so he just gets placed with the servant group because they really don't know what to do with him. So it's all about him struggling and they thought that he was the the chosen one who will save the dinosaurs from a terrible destruction that's going to come soon but his brother supposedly is going to be the chosen one because he's bigger he's stronger but he's younger and so it's kind of all about how his brother bravehorn kind of kind of doesn't want to be the chosen one but he kind of teases longcrest about him not being the chosen one and Pretty much nobody wants to hang out with Longcrest because he doesn't have a gift, supposedly. But it was really good. I liked how um, Longcrest, even through all the struggles he was dealing with, was not having very many friends. I did love the friends that he ended up having in the book. I thought they were really strong friends for him. And I liked the bond between brothers. Even though there was a lot of struggle between the brothers, they both kind of ended up realizing that they really needed each other as brothers. So it was really good. I really, really enjoyed this one. It definitely has a good versus evil feel through the book. So it was definitely good. I do recommend that one. That was good. All right, next one is 
I finished the first three books in the Derek Cod Tales by Melanie Dickerson. I don't have the first book, so I'll put that up here. But I do have the second and third one, and I finished all three in one week. <laughs> but they were all good. I do love Melanie and how she really links each book with a different character in a family. So the first book in the Derek Cod Tales, uh, Court of Swans, follows Dahlia and Goffrey. Jeffrey? Goffrey? I never know how to pronounce that. Her brothers get accused of high treason to the crown, and so they are arrested, and she has to try to figure out how to help them escape or help find their innocence, because she knows they're innocent. And so each story after that, so far, has been about one of the brothers in her family. So they're all really good. I did do a, um, a recent vlog about reading these. It was during my birthday, and I really enjoyed them. I think they were a lot of fun. All right, so the next book that I want to talk about is Hope Was Here by Joan Bauer, and I gave this one four stars, almost four and a half stars. I really enjoyed this one. I believe this is her Newbery Award winner winning book. I really enjoyed it. I thought this one was really good. This cover edition, my favorite out of all the editions that are out there, but this is about Hope and her Aunt Addie, and they leave their kind of place where they were living for a while. And they leave due to, mostly because of money trouble, but they end up at a cafe where the owner has cancer. And so they go to kind of help him out, ease a little bit of the troubles, and Hope really doesn't want to go because she was kind of used to the place she was living, so she was unsure about this new place. But she ends up finding a new friends, a new family. It's just, it's a beautiful story. How the owner of the cafe, GT, he ends up, He's the one who has cancer, but he ends up running for mayor against a really corrupt mayor that they had. And so it's all about his race to win as well and how the young people in the town, he, GT has helped almost every young person in the town in some way or some form. And so they end up helping him trying to get all of his signatures and trying to help uh, rally the people to have him be entered into the may mayor race? Mayor? Election. Mayor election. <laughs> but I really, really enjoyed this one. I thought it was a sweet book. I love Joan Bauer's characters. Uh, usually you can honestly see yourself or somebody you know in a lot of her characters because they're very, very just, not necessarily, well, most of them are pretty likable, but they are very genuine in their characteristics. And that's what I like about her books. I really enjoyed this one. I like all of her books. So, okay, there was that one. All right, the next book that I want to talk about is Refugee by Alan Gratz, and I really enjoyed this one. I give this one four and a half stars. It was almost five stars, but I think just that there was so many um, point of views that it kind of confused me just a little bit. There's three point of views. There's three different families, so it was kind of a lot of information to take in, so I think that's why it wasn't quite five stars, but overall, I really enjoyed it. So we're following a, a Jewish family with the main character being Joseph, and they are trying to escape from Germany, like right before World War II, and they are trying to get to Cuba via ship. All of these uh, families end up on a boat in some way, in some way. So we're following them. Then we're following a Cuban family, and the main character is Isabel, and they're trying to get from Cuba to Florida to escape kind of the revolution that was happening. And they were also following um, Mahmoud and his family, and they're trying to get from Africa into Germany, I believe, to escape the unrest that, that's going on in their country. So a lot going on. I really like how Alan Gratz connected every single story into the last few chapters. I thought that was really neat and really cool. So we're just following these three families on their way to be refugees in a different country. And I really enjoyed it. It was my first book by him. I know I will be reading more. I think they're really great, really informational uh, stories. And so, yeah, I definitely really like those books a lot. All right, so the next one I wanna talk about is, sorry, my paper's rustling if you can hear it. Next book I have is Ogre Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. So. This is the companion novel to Ella Enchanted. A lot of you might not know that there is a companion novel to Ella Enchanted. And I have to say, 
I like this one more. I know. Big shock. Because <laughs> I know everybody loves Ella Enchanted. But this one, this one was just so much fun. This was another four and a half star read. I loved it. It was so much fun. We get to see Lucinda. This is, I guess, like her first boo-boo, I guess, <laughs> as a fairy. I don't know. It might not even be her first boo-boo. I think she's well known as being the fairy that kind of causes really troublesome problems to people. But anyways, so we have Evie who works in an, an apothecary and she also has a friend named Wormy and they both work there. Well, Lucinda one day pops in and she finds out that Wormy is in love with is in love with Evie. And so Lucinda says, why don't you ask her to marry him, to marry you? And so he does, but Evie wants to just remain friends because that's that's what they've always been. So she tells him no. And Lucinda ends up cursing poor Evie and saying, you are going to be an ogre until you find someone who really loves you and proposes and you have to accept. So this is all about her adventures about of being an ogre. So the townspeople are terrified of her. She finds out like who exactly really are her friends because she's an ogre. She can't tell anyone that she's an ogre. Like she can't tell anyone that she was the apothecary owner. Like she can't say she's enchanted. Every time she tries to tell somebody, her mouth stops working. So she has to learn to survive and hopefully find love in this book and I thought it was really cute. It's a really fun one. I really enjoyed this one. All right, next one that I want to talk about is uh, the buddy read that some of my friends and I had this month was Dreams of Savannah by Rosanna M. White and I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm going to be doing a whole review video on it. I'm hoping Thursday but I'm waiting for the book to come in the mail. <laughs> so if it doesn't I still probably will but I'm really hoping it comes in the mail this week so I can do the review. But this is about Dahlia and Finn, and they're in love um, right before the uh, civil war between the states. And so uh, Finn ends up going off to war and kind of not really in jest, but he didn't really take it to heart when he said, we wait for me. And she says forever. Well, he is presumed lost during the war and she is willing to wait for him. And we find out that he was injured and he is, I believe, in Cuba. Another Cuba story. Uh, but we're in Cuba and some free black man ends up saving him uh, named Luther, who I believe is a pastor as well. And he tells Finn that he lost his wife. She was also a free black woman, but she was taken and now is a slave in his own area in the US and so he says I'll help you get healed up and but will you help me to go find my wife so Finn says sure absolutely so they end up trying to get there and Finn is trying to get back because at this point Dahlia is um, kind of not engaged to someone but someone's really trying to get her attention so he's got to get home really quick he doesn't know this but he's got to get home really quick so I really enjoyed it. There was a lot of kind of war terminology, at least in the beginning of the book. But by the end, I really enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the historical aspects of it. So really did enjoy it. And I can't wait to talk quite a bit more about it in my review coming up, hopefully at the end of this week. All right. And then the last book that I want to talk about was probably my highest rated like four and three quarter stars. I don't do quarter stars though, but it was really good. Um, I feel like though it would have been five stars if it was just one timeline. It was dual timeline and that is The Butterfly and the Violin by Christy Cambron. And I listened to this and I can't remember who suggested it to me. So please let me know down in the comments so I can thank you. It was really good. I cannot read, wait to read the sequel. I enjoyed it a lot. So this book is dual timeline and in modern times it is Sira and Will and Sira is I believe she's like an art I don't know exactly what she is she's an art expert but she's looking for a painting of a girl who played the violin and she ended up being in Auschwitz during World War II so she's trying to find this painting and Will is actually 
part of like a very big family, a wealthy family. And they're trying to find the painting too to, to kind of settle a, a will that his father made. So they're both trying to find it. They end up working together to find it. But um, the modern timeline I felt a little lacking. It wasn't my favorite, but the, the historical timeline was really good. So we are following Adele and she is in the Austrian Philharmonic, but her father is an Austrian general, I believe general, in the German army. Well, she ends up falling in love with a cellist in the, in the Philharmonic. And so they end up both only really once, I feel like. I don't know if they're helping too many Jews at that time, but they're really, they only helped one family, but they end up getting arrested, both of them. And her father and mother really are no help <laughs> in helping Adele. So they're both arrested and Adele is supposed to go to a concentration camp just for a few weeks to kind of work off that debt of helping the Jews, but she ends up being there until the end of the war. And so uh, before she ends up being taken away, her mother slips her her practice violin. She has something of home with her. So she ends up having to work in the orchestra in Auschwitz camp. And I didn't even know that there was an orchestra, but I guess they played when the soldiers were marching, when people were marched off to literally be killed and they had to play and they couldn't stop. And so her violin basically saved her life from being killed. And so it's a really heartbreaking story, but it's also really good and an interesting read. I really did like the historical timeline. I thought it was interesting seeing how her life went. Um, I liked though in the modern time how we didn't know what happened to Adele. So they're trying to figure out what happened to her after Auschwitz or did she even survive? They don't know until almost the very end of the story. So that was a really great book. <laughs> At least the historical timeline, I loved so much. I loved it so much. Um, honestly, I would have been really happy if it was just Adele's timeline. It would have been a five-star read, definitely, if it was just that. It was so, so good. I loved it so much. And I think that's it for my reading wrap-up. So at least I can show you some of the books that I finished. Ugh. Are they all going to be facing the same way? No. Why would they? <laughs> there we go. All right, so these are some of the books that I finished besides the ones that I had to show you on camera. But so yeah, it was a really great reading month this month. I'm hoping the rest of the year is going to be as good. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know down in the comments uh, what was your favorite read of July. I'd love to love to talk about it. I love to talk with you in the comments down below. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next video.